kids think that only unproductive people procrastinate, that only people who don't get their work done, they don't think that like, you know, uh, Elon Musk procrastinates, right? The truth is everybody procrastinates. And I don't know what Elon Musk does, but he procrastinates. Um, procrastination is counterproductive. Oh no, I procrastinated, it's over. Okay, the game is over, I'll never get anything done. Um, the truth is procrastination can be a part of self-defense. You're doing it for a reason. Procrastination is a part of being productive because it protects you from working too much, okay? When it's within healthy boundaries. And procrastination is fun. This is another one that I think, especially as educators and parents, we might think, oh, they're always goofing off. They're having so much fun. The truth is that procrastination can start to feel like torture. It feels like a trap. Maybe torture is a strong word, but a lot of times kids feel trapped by their procrastination. They can't stop clicking the YouTube. They can't, they can't escape from the things that are making them procrastinate. Um, so if, it, if we change the way we talk about procrastination and say, everybody procrastinates, sometimes it's a form of self-defense, but you need to escape before it feels like you're trapping yourself. That changes the conversation we're going to have around procrastination. And so we're going to keep going with that. So normalizing that procrastination happens can help us understand it. Just like we tried to understand the factors of intrinsic motivation, now we're going to try to understand the factors of procrastination. So it's time to get started. What are the thoughts going through your head? Oh my gosh, there's so much to deal with here. I can't believe how complicated this is. It's going to take forever to get this right. That's A. B says, who is making me do this? Someone is making me do it. I didn't choose to do this. C says, oh my gosh, I have the best, most beautiful, amazing idea for this project. Uh, I don't know how to, it's all up here. It's going to be so amazing. Or D says, this is due in ages. I'm not going to do it right now. So now you started to work and you're working on it. And you're like, oh my gosh, A says, this little thing is not working. I have to fix this. This little thing is driving me nuts. B says, do not tell me what to do. I do this my way. I'm not asking for your advice. C says, oh yeah, like this is, this is working well. Everything's going pretty well. I should probably spend more time on it, but yeah, it's going well. I think it's fine. And D says, oh my gosh, it's not even, it's like not even due yet. Like it's not even real to me. This is, this is nowhere near due yet. All right, now it's time to turn it in. A, I cannot turn this in. This is garbage. This is horrible. This is the worst thing that's ever been done. B, oh my God, why do they make this deadline now? This is like, who, this is so rude of them. C, wait, what's the due date? The due date for what? And D, um, oh my God, it's due right now. I gotta do this, go, 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 go. So A style is the perfectionist overdoer. In your head, when you're approaching your work, everything has to be perfect. And I don't care how much effort it's gonna take, everything is gonna be totally perfect. And I don't care if I take on everything under the sun, I will accomplish it all in some magical way, okay? B is the defier. B says, you want me to work on this? I will choose when I work on this. You know, I will not do the work and that will show you that I'm in charge of my own self. C is the dreamer. A C says, wow, I just love um, the think about this big idea. I have such an amazing idea but I don't really, I don't want to ruin it by actually bringing it down on the paper. It's not going to be as good if I start doing the work. And D says the crisis maker. The only thing that motivates me is, oh my God, this is due in two seconds. That's the only way I can actually get motivated to do stuff. Okay. Now, understanding those styles can help us understand where that procrastination is coming from. Because you might give a students an assignment and some of them, they all procrastinate and they all might all procrastinate for different reasons. So you can't do strategies for procrastination until you understand what's actually motivating them and what's not motivating them, okay? Um, so these thoughts has to be perfect. The teacher's so mean, right? Um, I love this topic. I have a great idea for a 300 page fantasy series. And that's a real quote. One kid's like, I've got a great idea for a novel. So this is supposed to be a two page response paper. Um, that's the dreamer, by the way. And oh no, I only have one hour to get it done. So same problem from the outside, but very different going on inside their mind. Um, and so one important thing about these procrastination styles, they relate to our internal thought processes. And if we don't address them, they will just suck the fun out of everything. So the first step to overcoming procrastination is um, accepting, accepting yourself. 
you know, one thing about perfectionism, and I saw there are some type A people, so we've, we've experienced that. I tell my students, perfectionism is actually coming from, it's a part of you that we don't want to get rid of because perfectionism is ambition. You want to do amazing work, and I support that. However, your perfectionism is getting in the way of you doing amazing work. So if step one is accept it, but step two is what's a small thing you can do? Step three, remove the things that provoke your procrastination. And step four, develop the path. So once we understand the procrastination style, we can develop a path out of it.